So we got this huge dump of snow, but there's a little bit of melt, and I thought it'd be puddle paradise today, but with all this gray weather and no sun, it's, it's like a puddle of purgatory. Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and we're coming to you from winter wonderland, even though it's almost May. That's just Alberta. But we've got a good lens to play with today because we have the brand new Sony G Master version 2, 24 to 72.8. We've been really waiting for this lens for a long time. Now we did recently look at the brand new Sony 70 to 200 2.8 version 2 G Master, and that did an amazing job of not only improving optical performance, but also reducing size and weight. Well, now we've got this new 24 to 70 2.8 G Master version 2, and uh, we're gonna test it out today and see if it does the same thing. Now, the handling of the new 24 to 70 version 2, it's definitely lighter. 695 grams, third of a knock compared to about 880 grams on the old lens, so that's a nice change. Also, very compact size wise. I do like some new features here. The first thing I point out is actually the hood. We've actually got a little door here right on the side for adjusting polarizing filters, things like that. That's nice because you don't really often see that from Sony in this focal range. Now this lens is weather sealed, good on a day like today. And starting at the front of the lens, the manual focus ring. It is a linear focus, which is great, but it's kind of loosey goosey, really light. And I found focusing on the test chart manually, it was a little bit too fast, but you know, you get used to it. Couple custom buttons on here, which is nice for professional lens. The zoom is interesting. Now the zoom actually has a now smooth or tighten function. And I like that. The Titan function is a little bit too tight for me to like use it handheld on a regular basis, but it would be great if you're doing video work and you don't want it to zoom on a gimbal or, you know, macro work or you're pointing the lens up and down and you don't want it to creep. We've got a fun little addition here as well. We now have an aperture ring on here. You can lock it into auto if you still want to use control dials, but it actually has a very solid clicker. It probably will loosen up over time, but it takes a little bit of effort to move it. But I do like that. It'll stay where I click it, and I can absolutely feel and hear when I'm clicking through my aperture blades. If you don't want a clickable aperture, you've got a switch on the bottom here, and now it's nice and smooth. So of course, one of the big upgrades we're seeing on the new lenses is that we're now getting the better motor technology for autofocusing. The new 24 to 70 has four linear XD motors, very silent, very smooth, and we've seen this on the other G Masters now. It's a nice upgrade to have. But we decided to test the old lens versus the new lens, just see how far it's come. To be honest, for photography, as you can see here, the old lens actually goes pretty quick, even though it's using older motor technology. The new lens is definitely a little bit quicker, but more importantly, smoother. Every time I was using the old G Master, I could feel the lens elements moving. I could even hear the motors. And I think for video applications especially, you're gonna appreciate the smoothness of the new lens. For photography, I mean, they're both quick, and that's a nice thing. So as usual with our lens test, we like to check for breathing because this can be an issue for video, doing focus poles where your focal length keeps changing a lot as you manually focus. Now on this particular lens, you can see in the examples here, there is a little bit of breathing. It's not terrible. Jordan shot our final Nikon Z9 review using the Sony A1 and this second version 24 to 70. And he said, although you could see a little bit of breathing, it wasn't obnoxious, didn't really hamper his ability to do nice focus poles. Now you may have heard that a lot of the newer Sony cameras are starting to incorporate breathing correction where they're actually digitally cropping and accounting for that focal length change real time while recording video. And it's a great feature, but the more breathing a lens has, the more it's gonna crop in, the more image quality you're gonna lose. So it is still a factor to worry about breathing, but again, that being said, this lens doesn't really have much to worry about. You guys can see my minimum distance is right about there. Pretty impressive actually. So this improves the macro capabilities over the original 24 to 70 quite a bit. That did a one to four macro reproduction. This does one to three. And as you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm quite close physically, but I'm also getting a pretty tight frame. It really just adds to the versatility of this as one lens that you take with you and that's it. 
So we spent a cold day downtown getting some shots, but you know, this kind of light, we're not gonna get flare, we're not gonna get loca, not seeing a lot of bokeh examples. So we're gonna get more samples over the weekend. We're gonna come back, take a look at the files and give our final conclusions on the 24 to 70 G Master version two. Okay, so we're back. Let's talk about some of our final findings on this lens. So bokeh first. Uh, actually, the bokeh was quite soft and pleasing. Uh, I noticed we didn't really get that much mechanical cat's eye in the corners wide open, and it is largely gone once you stop down. Uh, still nice round shapes. Not really a soap bubble effect, which I like, so that meant that our fall off from in focus to out of focus was smooth, and you didn't really get like that distracting double image look in the bokeh. So overall, I would say quite soft, quite pleasing. Okay, let's talk about flare next. Now the original 24 to 70 G Master, it did have some issues shooting to the sun. I mean, you would get washed out areas of flare as well. You would often get very small but bright distracting ghosts. Now on this lens, what we find is the contrast is much better. You're not getting as much washed out areas with flare. Ghosting is very minimal, far less distracting than the original lens. Next, let's talk about LOCA, the longitudinal chromatic aberrations where you get color fringes in the autofocus areas, foreground and background. So the original lens did have some, it was noticeable. The new lens here we've tested it and I still do see it. It's not as bad as the original lens. They have improved it, but there is still LOCA here. And remember, it can be a little bit difficult to get rid of from post. I wouldn't say it's an excessive amount. It's not a big deal, but it is still there. So let's talk about sun stars here. They're pretty average. I mean, it's pretty typical of what we expect out of a standard zoom lens. You don't often get great sun stars. So kind of blurry tines to the stars and otherwise just very average. Okay, so how does the new G Master stack up in terms of sharpness? Well, first off at 24 millimeters, focused in the center here, wide open, you can see it's pretty sharp. It does improve though when we stop down to f5.6, as you can see here. Now let's look at the corners. We focused in the corners here, upper left. We're shooting wide open at 2.8. You can see the corners do have a bit of softness. It's not bad. Again, stopping down to 5.6 does very much improve that. Okay, and now the lens at 70 millimeters. Pretty similar story, shooting wide open. Things are still nice and crisp in the center. Stopping down to 5.6 does improve that a little bit. The corners here at 2.8, you can see focused in the corner. Pretty decent, I mean, it's still a little bit of softness, but definitely holding up 5.6 again, you're getting pretty good sharpness all across the field. So now let's talk about how the new G Master compares to the old G Master. The actually, in terms of sharpness, the old G Master was very sharp, wide open at 24 millimeters. It was at 70 millimeters where the corners kind of fell apart. And this new G Master absolutely improves on that. It also has better flare control, less ghosting, better loca. I mean, overall, the new lens just is a better optical performer in pretty much every way, shape and form over the old G Master. You know, would I buy the old G Master even if it was a really good deal? Probably not because there's then very good third party options that are also in a similar price point. So if I want to save money, well, let's take a look at something like the Tamron 2875. Now the Tamron 2875, yes, you do give up that 28 millimeter focal length versus the 24 millimeter on the Sony's. Uh, it also does have some ghosting issues for sure. However, it is very good, wide open, 28 millimeters, it's very sharp, very comparable to the new Sony. At 75 millimeters, I would still give the advantage to the new Sony G Master at 70 millimeters. It just seems a little bit sharper in the corners, but given that they've got quite a big difference in price point, the Tamron could be a really good affordable option. Now, if you do want to stay third party, but you don't want to lose that 24 millimeter focal length, then you can go with the Sigma 24 to 70. Excellent lens as well, optically fantastic. You know, it does have older autofocus motor technology. It's a little bit slower. And of course, it's a big, heavy lens. And I think that's an appreciable factor. Going at least with the Tamron and getting that more compact nature, or certainly this new G Master, I do like the fact that it's lighter weight, more compact, that might be worth the extra money. Also remember that if you go third party, you know, it's not gonna support the autofocus continuous with the fast burst rates on cameras like the A1 and A9. But otherwise, I would say from an optical standpoint, the new Sony G Master 24 to 70 is probably your best overall lens, but of course it is the most expensive. So to answer our question, has Sony now made an improvement on their professional flagship standard zoom? I think yes, absolutely they have. And I love that they've not only made it better optically, but reduced the size and weight, very much like they did with the 70 to 200 2.8. Now for Sony users, you've got a 1424, a 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200 that you would absolutely love to use that will give you great optical performance, albeit with the higher price tags that come with professional series zooms. 
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please do leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about this new lens design. And also, do check out deeperview.com. You can see our sample gallery shot on this lens and get a better idea of what you're actually looking at there. Otherwise, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you all soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.